Planning out large projects where you have loads of different moving parts can be a challenge sometimes. But by creating a template in Notion, you can answer all of those repeated questions every time you have a new project. Stick around and I'll tell you how. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay part of the conversation. For free Notion templates, check out the link in the description below. For those of you unfamiliar in Notion, you can use databases to collect loads of information and just show the bits that you want to see. So I'm going to start off by creating a simple database in a table view. I'm going to name it Project Database. And now every row in this table essentially is a different project. If we go over to the arrow in the database, we can actually create a template for this database. You see, now we're editing a template in this specific database. I'm going to name it New Project Template so I know what it is. I'm then going to change some of these properties, essentially identification for each project. So each project will have a different date and each project will have different progress in completion. Now I'm just going to make this page a little bit wider because we're going to have lots of information in here. Before you start any project, you need to define what the project's actually going to be. So we can have a section for that. You also need to know who's actually going to be working on the project, if it's just yourself or if there's loads of members of a team. You also need to understand the value proposition of the work you're doing. Why are you actually doing this project? Is the project worth doing? Maybe you have a list of stakeholders that you need to keep track of or communicate with whilst doing the project, so you can have that list. High level budget management may be something you need to keep track of if it is a big project, so having a section for that. Tolerance, assumptions, dependencies, constraints are all things that you may want to keep track of depending on the size of the project that you're going to be doing. So once you know you're going to do the project and you understand why you're going to do it, you then need to go about planning how you're going to go about achieving it. How are you going to communicate with the team, with the committee, with the stakeholders? How are you going to communicate feedback or how are others going to communicate feedback to you? What apps are you going to use? What services are you going to use? Are you using email? What days are you going to communicate on? Those sorts of things can go under these communication headers. Then of course in planning you need to have some sort of project control. Now this is going to be highly individualized to the project and how people work. So just as an example, you could have three different teams working on the project. And each team or each individual that's working on the project will have specific tasks that they have to get done. So what we can do is we can create a database for tasks, which will be all of the tasks that are related to this specific project. We can then assign the task to the team, the person, the individual, the group that need to do that task. And then as this is a project dashboard, we can filter that database for just team one. We can then create a linked database in the team two. We can then filter that for team two. So team one just needs to go to team one to see all of their tasks. Team two, go to team two to see all of their tasks. And then you can repeat this process for team three, go into team three, create a linked database and filter that for team three. You can then expand on that database and add numerous different things in there because essentially this will be a master database for the project. If you're not sure what a master task database is in Notion, check out this video over here. We then need an endpoint because we need to know when we plan to have the project completed by. Now again, depending on the project, you probably want some sort of risk management or risk assessment if it is a large project or there's lots of manual handling and things like that going on. So we can create a database board view, have all of the hazards and risks in here that we need to manage. We can then look at those risks and see, okay, maybe we need to address this risk to make it acceptable or avoid the risk. We can then decide what action we need to take on those risks. This is also a way of documenting the risks that you've thought about. So if anyone new comes into the project or stakeholders want to see what's going on, you have all of those risks documented. And if there are things that come up later on in the line, you can come back here and see if you thought about it or not. If you didn't, you can just add it in there. So once you've planned out your project, you're actually going to execute on that project and start work. When you're executing on the project, you want some sort of metric to measure how the progress is going. So you can have a section for all of the metrics you may want to measure. 
Obviously, going back to the money situation, you would want some sort of money tracking when you are executing on the project. Are you on track? What are the group expenses like? What are the forecasting expenses like? And you can add and take away different things that you may want to include in your specific project case. Then once you've executed on that project, you'll need to close out that project. As I mentioned before, you will want an end date so you can have a calendar with all the different tasks, the projects, and when the end date is supposed to be. Then you can see when the end date is coming up so you can start thinking about handover information. Those could be documentations, any sort of paperwork, or anything you need to hand over to the people that you are doing the project for. Then personally, I would look at a follow-up contact, so maybe two weeks or three weeks after you've completed the project and you've handed it over to them, you can then follow up and see how everything's going. You could set a date or a time, anything like that, once the project is completed. Now because what we created is a template, it doesn't actually show up in the database. But when we go in and create a new project, you can see that template there. Now when we push on the template, all of that information, all of those different sections will appear. So we can name this project one. And you can see the calendar's blank because this is a new calendar specific to this project. And all of the risks will be different and isolated to the project, so if we call this risk one. And again, this dashboard is going to be specific to the project. So if we go into any of the tasks, we'll add task four into team two. You can see all of this information was put in project one and we'll just add a date in there. Now when we open up that second page and we go into the template, you can see all of those sections have now been put in. There's no name, so we're gonna name it project two. There's no date because this is a different project, so we'll add a different date in. Now when we scroll down to that dashboard, we go into team two. That task four that we added into project one isn't there because this is a different project. And you can see with the risks, you only have what was in that template, so that risk one is not there. And then the same thing with the calendar, it's not called calendar one, it's completely blank because this is specific to project two. Maybe you want a visual representation of how your project's doing. If that's the case, check out this video over here and I'll see you there.